Chapter 371, The Yao Family's Reaction Beijing, at the Tang Family's Residence Normally, it was difficult for the core members of the Tang family to get together outside holidays. However, today, except for those who were outside of town and couldn't catch up, the rest had gathered here. Even Tang Xiao's parents who had yet to return to Star City also came here. Have you heard the news? Our family has just bullied the Yao and Sun families in Guangyang. They just suffered enormous losses in merely one night. Yup. I got the news as well. Tang Xiao is indeed worthy as the offspring of our Tang family. His methods were truly sound. Even last night, I heard father laughing for a long time. Yunda, Lingyun, you two really have a good son. If it were not for him, I'm afraid that our family's business in Guangyang would have been completely driven out. Tang Yunda's smile was extraordinarily bright upon listening to the relatives who were amiably talking to him. On the contrary, Su Lingyun's smile was rather forced, yet, she still forced herself to smile at everyone after taking Tang Yunda's face into account. Little Yun, are you not happy? After discovering his wife's expression, Tang Yunda pulled her to a corner and whispered. It's not like that. I'm just a bit worried. Su Lingyun shook her head and said, with so many relatives involved in the family's important matter. I just can't understand why did Xiao run to Guangyang to take charge of the overall situation. Though I don't know anything about disputes between big families, but I heard it's very gruesome. With so many people from the Yao and Sun families dead, I'm afraid Xiao would suffer an unexpected mishap. I don't worry. Xiao has done very well in Guangyang. Tang Yunda gently hugged Su Lingyun and whispered, it shows that he has grown up. Besides, there are things that he must go through sooner or later, he just encountered it ahead of time. Don't you see that he's well and good now? He called father just last night. I can't say for sure, but last night, he led some people to scare off the Yao family. Will the Yaos really be frightened? Su Lingyun hesitated, if they did, would the dispute between both parties be over? It can be said that they wouldn't for now but I think it should be about the same. Tang Yunda said with a smile, the Yaos have no intention of losing all decorum with our family for now. The matters in Guangyang and Fukong are just they testing the waters to probe the cards in our hands. Yunda, tell me. Should we go to Guangyang to support Xiao? Su Lingyun was a bit relieved as she nodded and said, I'm afraid. Don't be afraid. He's smart and brave. Tang Yunda shook his head and said, if he really can't shoulder it, he will never force himself to do it in spite of adversity. Do you not see that everyone in the family looks happy? That shows that we have snatched a victory. Anyhow, I'll ask father later to let Xiao go back to Shanghai right away after the matter has been concluded. Yes, you must ask him. Su Lingyun hurriedly nodded and said, Xiao is a college student. Shanghai University is a good university, so he mustn't delay his schooling. Don't worry. Tang Yunda comforted. Inside the ancestral residence, the two brothers, Tang Guisheng and Tang Guisheng, were sitting face to face separated by a tea table. At this time, a slight smile was hanging on their old faces. Amazing, awesome. Tang Guisheng exclaimed. Back when I agreed for him to take in charge in Guangyang, I actually didn't have much hope. Tang Guisheng nodded and said, even though the plan had already been completed and we expected to lose Guangyang, then so be it. Consider it tempering him. I didn't expect that he would give me such a pleasant surprise. Unexpected. Ring, ring, ring. A mobile phone's ringtone sounded. Connecting the phone, Tang Guisheng then heard the caller's words. He suddenly stood in response and asked hurriedly, Is that real? Bai Yang has been released? The first and second man of Guangyang province signed and authorized it? Great. <laughs> I see. After hanging up the phone, Tang Guisheng joyfully said, The Bai family's head, Bai Yang, has been released. It's truly unexpected. 
I really didn't expect it. What Xiao did yesterday shocked the number one and two. They probably did it as not to let any conflict resurgence between us, the Yao and Sun families yet again. Thus, they released by Yang. First brother, don't get muddle-headed due to the pleasant surprise. Tang Guishou squinted his eyes and slowly said, I think the matter is not as simple as it looks. Logically speaking, the number one and two men of Guangyang province are not our people, though they are not the Yao's either. Shouldn't they also hope that we and the Yao struggled to death? Tang Guisheng was briefly startled as the smile on his face quickly receded. After hesitating for a moment, he doubtfully asked, Could it be that they don't want a large-scale strife to emerge yet again in their region? It's quite unlikely, I think. Tang Guishou shook his head and said, The Chus are the biggest family in Guangyang province, while they and the number one figure in Guangyang have a close relationship with the neutral camp. They should not easily meddle in this matter. I actually thought. Does this matter have anything to do with Xiao? Third brother, aren't you thinking too highly of Xiao? Tang Guisheng shook his head and laughed, he's outstanding, I admit. But there's no way he has the means to intervene in the bureaucracy, right? You. Ah. Uh. Tang Guisheng was silent for a moment. He then took out his mobile and said, I'll call him and ask. Startled, Tang Guisheng involuntarily laughed and immediately said, Since you think so, I'd like to hear about it as well. Call him. Half a minute later, Tang Guishou dialed Tang Xiao's number. He then smiled and said after Tang Xiao connected the phone, Xiao, third grandpa here, where are you now? I'm on the way back to Fukong province. Tang Xiao answered. Xiao I just got the news of what you did. It's great and amazing. Tang Guishou smiled and said, the rampant and arrogant Yao family could be said to have been knocked down by you. Third grandpa, you can't be calling just to praise me, right? Please tell me if you have anything to say. Said Tang Xiao with a smile. You're really smart, Kido, Tang Guishou laughed, anyhow, I have a small thing to ask you. The Bai family's head has been released this morning. He personally called your first grandpa. But, I'm very curious. Did it have anything to do with you? Yeah. I made a deal with the Huang family's head in Fukong when I met him back then. As for the deal, third grandpa doesn't need to ask. I guarantee that it won't be detrimental to the Tang family. It's just my other business deal, that's all. Astounded, Tang Guishou said, the Huang family's head, Huang Jinfu, is able to influence the Chu family's top figure? It was not only the Huangs I talked with, but also the Sus. Tang Xiao said, I don't have a direct relationship with the Chus, though. So the best choice was to relate the Huang Jin Fu, the Huang's head. How true is that heroes always come from youth since ancient times? Tang Guishou's lips wriggled and sighed, I'm impressed. Not many people in the world can make this old man impressed, but you did it. You've done things beautifully, truly great. Let's have a drink when you come back to Beijing. All right. Tang Xiao said with a smile. Hanging up the phone, Tang Guishou then looked at Tang Guixing's strange expression and said, First brother, you just heard it, yes? I activated the speaker. It was indeed Tang Xiao's doing for Bai Yang being able to come out. As for the deal between him and the Chu family, I didn't ask much since he didn't want to say it. Third brother, did you realize something? Xiao is really too mysterious. Tang Guixing's eyes sparkled as he muttered, I suddenly have a hunch that he has many other secrets hidden from us. Let him do as he wants. Tang Guishou grinned, regardless of how many secrets he doesn't want us to know, he's still an offspring of our Tang family. He will never do anything to harm the family. I believe no one in our family will oppose even if you directly pass the head position of the Tang family to him, so long as he has the ability and he's willing to accept it. You're right. If he has the ability, the authority of the family can be handed over to him in the future. Tang Guisheng laughed, how can he do something harmful to his own family, anyway? 
Well, let's forget about it. If anything, don't send anyone to investigate it. I believe he'll tell us about it one day. All right. Meanwhile, at the other side, while the Tang family was celebrating, the Yao family was in a gloomy mood. Yao Qingzuan looked ashen as silently sat in his study room for a few hours. It was not until noon that he finally strode out of the room. Chang Qing, notify Liang Tang to come back. Also, send someone to visit the Tang family. Tell them that we're sending some tonics since the Tang's old bastard is unwell. Father, isn't this just akin to admitting defeat? Yao Qingqing's face drastically changed as he hurriedly said. Our losses in Guangyang are not large despite the Sun family losing quite a great deal. Besides, we haven't used our forces in Fukong yet. So, once we launch an assault from there, the odds of the Tang family preserving their assets in Guangyang and Fukong province are slim. Yet, until now, you haven't clearly investigated who took charge of Guangyang for the Tang family. Yao Qingzuan snorted coldly and said, With us knowing nothing about the enemy's circumstances, how can we calculate our chances of victory if we continue to fight? This, Yao Qingcheng didn't know how to answer. Suddenly, Yao Qingcheng's mobile's ringtone rang. As he connected the call and listened to the other party's words, he fell into silence. Really now? What happened again? Seeing his son's silent expression, foreboding arose inside Yao Qingzuan's heart as he sonorously said. Bai Yang has been released. Yao Qingcheng said bitterly, the first and second figures of Guangyang signed and authorized it simultaneously. Furthermore, there were also some people speaking for him in Beijing. Yao Qingzuan's expression changed. He fell into silence for a good deal of time before he suddenly smiled, though rather unsightly, what a good Tang family, eh? Little did I think that they would conceal themselves so deeply. I'm afraid it would be a bit difficult to bring them down as long as that Tang's old geezer has yet to die. Forget it. We've already tested the waters, anyway. Just do what I've told you before. All right. Yao Chengqing nodded silently. As he was about to leave, Yao Qingzuan shouted imposingly, Remember, even if the battle over there is over, you must investigate clearly who was the person in charge of Guangyang province. Affirmative. I'll do it according to your instructions. Chapter 372, Small World Two cars drove fast on the provincial highway connecting Guangyang to Fukong. While sitting on the second car, Tang Xiao quietly read the information about the Yang family. This time he didn't bring a large number of men to Fukong, only bringing six experts from the Everlasting Feast Hall. The reason being that the operation plan he had devised was to first carry out assassinations, while the operation itself could be described as the men's quality was being more important than quantity. Each of the six experts from the Everlasting Feast Hall was able to work independently. Hence, Tang Xiao was confident that the seven of them would be able to set off a bloody festival of carnage in Fukong province. Boss, Instructor Chen from Fukong said he wants to see you. A man in the front seat turned his head to speak after hanging up the phone. Huh? Puzzled, Tang Xiao raised his brows, who's this Instructor Chen? Chen Xiaohua. The man replied in a low voice. Tang Xiao was slightly startled as he then asked, Where's he now? He's at the Emerald Hotel. The man said. Since we have yet to decide where to stay, head to Emerald Hotel directly. Tang Xiao nodded and said. Affirmative. The man nodded. Half an hour later, the two cars arrived at the underground parking lot of the Emerald Hotel in Zhou City, Fukong Province. After parking the cars, the group of seven took the elevator to the 18th floor. Tang Xiao then saw a gentle middle-aged man wearing eyeglasses standing outside. Hi, boss. Upon seeing Tang Xiao, Chen Xiaohua's eyes immediately lit up as he bowed. You're Chen Xiaohua? Tang Xiao sized him up, nodding in response. Yes, it's me. Chen Xiaohua said with a smile. Waving his hand, Tang Xiao then walked toward the corridor and asked, Why are you in Fukong? 
Is it because our everlasting feast halls antique business in Zhou City? While walking alongside Tang Xiao, Chen Xiaohua replied, Our everlasting feast hall indeed has a few antique shops in Zhou City. But the reason I came this time is that I need to consult some things with you, boss. And that is? Tang Xiao was surprised. Let's get to the room first, boss. I've been waiting for your arrival and I have already prepared the tea. Chen Xiaohua said. Tang Xiao's eyes flashed as he nodded. Soon, Tang Xiao entered a presidential suite under Chen Xiaohua's lead, while the six men he brought stayed in the corridor. The tea should be a cover, right? Let's see what kind of drugs are sold in your gourd, shall we? First of all, I'll report about the cultivation situation to you, boss. Chen Xiaohua stood in front of Tang Xiao and said with a smile. The true qi inside my body has been completely converted to true essence and my strength has been increased by a level. Thus, I want to thank you for your trust in cultivating me. You have my word that I'll seriously carry out your orders in the future, boss. Tang Xiao waved his hand, hinting for him to sit down. After Chen Xiaohua sat in front of Tang Xiao, he continued, Boss, what I want to consult you about is what you said about the existence of other worlds outside our own. Is that true? Yes. Tang Xiao narrowed his eyes as he nodded. With a startled expression, Chen Xiaohua said, Boss, please check this thing. Having said that, he took a piece of stone from his pocket and then, bowing, he handed it over to Tang Xiao. Multicolored Luan Phoenix Stone? After having a clear look at the stone, Tang Xiao's face drastically changed. He looked excited as he saw a stream of multicolored halos on the stone. The colors were red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, and violet. He quickly grabbed it and released his spiritual sense to wrap around it. After his inspection, he discovered that the multicolored stone was only of ordinary quality. Though its quality was ordinary, yet countless powerhouses in the immortal world would fight for it. Even supreme celestial figures would covet it. Multicolored Luan Phoenix Stone, it was the best material to craft immortal tools, and a fist size of it could be refined into a top-grade immortal tool. In the past Tang Xiao also possessed several top-grade immortal tools. Two of which were refined and mixed with multicolored Luan Phoenix Stone. The power it could burst out when used was much more powerful than other top-grade immortal tools. Xiao Hua, where did you get this stone? With all seriousness, Tang Xiao's eyes stared at Chen Xiao Hua as he asked. From the West. Chen Xiao Hua's expression slightly changed as he said, the Longguan Mountain. Tell me how you got it. Tang Xiao said. Boss, you know that I'm the manager of our everlasting feast hall's antique business. Chen Xiaohua said, due to particular reasons I heard that there were quite a lot of precious antiques in the western region, so I brought some people there. About two months ago, when we arrived at Longguan Mountain, we found that the place had a beautiful environment. There was a village with more than a hundred villagers living there, and they held some old objects left from ancient times. I spent some money to buy those old objects. However, because the arduous and difficult paths in Longquan Mountain, we had to spend the night there. Thus, several of us then went to the mountain to hunt for something in order to kill time. And the result was that we got lost. Despite its seemingly beautiful environment, the Longquan Mountain turned out to be fraught with dangers. That night we encountered terrible fierce beasts that almost killed us on several occasions. Due to that we then entered a forest area by chance with very fresh and cleaner air than anywhere else. Even breathing a strand of it made our bodies very comfortable. However, a very terrible fierce beast was also there and forced us to go deeper and deeper and after that, we found a grave with its entrance opened. Out of desperation, we had to dash inside. After we got inside, it was as though we had arrived at another world. Inside, there were flowers, grasses, a blue sky and white clouds. And most importantly, we had never seen about 80% of the vegetation and wild animals and there were tons of fierce beasts inside. Even. 
After speaking up to there, Chen Shaohua came to a halt as some lingering fear flashed in his eyes. Even what? Tang Xiao asked in a deep tone. We even found a dragon figure. Its whole body was pitch black. Chen Shaohua continued in a low voice, it was a five meters long five-clawed black dragon that could release black flames. It was extremely horrible and scary. We witnessed it releasing black flames at a boulder weighing about five tons and melting it into liquid. Continue. Tang Shou said. Since it was a dead end, we didn't venture too deep inside. Hence, we hurriedly returned to the old path we had taken previously. It took a huge effort to get out of there alive. Chen Shaohua said, after that, I went back to Jingmen Island and reported this matter to Little Boss. She then ordered me to keep it confidential. Tang Xiao frowned. He had never heard Gu Xiaoxue mentioning this matter before. It was not until we learned the cultivation technique from Elder Ji Chime that I suddenly realized something about that place. It turns out that the exceptionally fresh air there was because it was filled with rich heaven and earth spiritual qi. I mentioned this matter to Little Boss again after I converted my true qi into true essence. Then she finally let me come here to tell you everything I know. But... But what? Tang Shou asked. But Little Boss wanted me to convey some words. She said that that place is fraught with dangers, so she hopes that Boss will be cautious. It would be best to not go there for the time being. Tang Xiao finally understood why Gu Xiaoxue didn't tell him about this matter. She knew his strength and she was afraid that he would rush to that small world after hearing about it and disregard the dangers. Xiao Hua, except for you and Xiao Xue, you must never tell anyone else about this matter. We indeed can't enter that place for now, unless we're tired of living. Nevertheless, I'll take you there someday in the future after becoming stronger. I got it, boss. Don't worry about that. Chen Shaohua nodded. Give me this multicolored Luan Phoenix stone. Tang Xiao said, tell me the type of weapon you like, I'll help you refine a top-grade artifact weapon. Chen Shaohua's eyes lit up and immediately replied, a dagger would be the best. I realized that all of you like to use daggers. Tang Xiao said with a smile, wait until I use this piece multicolored Luan Phoenix stone, then I'll refine you a dagger while convenient. By the way, is there anything else you took from that small world beside this multicolored Luan Phoenix stone? Back then I only realized that the stone was out of the ordinary since it seemed a precious ore. Chen Shaohua forced a wry smile and said, so I only brought this thing out. I gotta say that your luck is really good for being able to come out of there alive. Tang Xiao nodded and said, all right. Let's stop speaking about this. Go back and tell Xiao Xue to rest assured, I won't go to that place within a short time. I'll remember it. Chen Shaohua nodded. Anyway, are you free this noon? Let's have lunch together. Tang Xiao asked. All right. Pleasantly surprised, Chen Shaohua's attitude turned more respectful. After lunch, Chen Shaohua left Emerald Hotel. Naturally, the presidential suited he booked became Tang Xiao's accommodation. However, he had yet to settle himself when his his grandfather called. What are you talking about, Grandpa? The matter is going to be finished like this? Tang Xiao's brows furrowed deeply. He was was a bit vexed. He had already devised the next operation plan, but his grandfather unexpectedly notified him that the Yaos took the initiative to admit defeat and wanted to end the games in Guangyang and Fukong. It's a temporary pullback. As of now, what our family needs the most is time. Tang Guisheng seriously said, according to my plan, our Tang family has invested a wealth accumulation of a decade to train more talented people in these three to five years. I want the Tang family to return to its heyday, and even beyond it in the next ten years. Tang Xiao was silent for a moment before he helplessly said, all right. All right. Since Grandpa has decided, I'll obey it. But it's kind of a pity, though. 
I thought we could make a huge fortune from the Yao, Sun, and Yang families. Besides, the outcome seemed to have turned out quite good. What huge fortune? Tang Guisheng asked, confused. Chapter 373, Going Home Tang Xiao took his phone back upon hearing Tang Guisheng's inquiry. He then let out a pale smile and said, when carrying out the assassinations, we threatened the Sun family members to transfer some money to me before we killed them. The amount is not much, about 600 to 700 million yuan. Thus, I had devised a plan to continue launching assaults on the Yaos and have them pay some ransom money. But alas, you actually called for a truce, Grandpa. Cough, cough. Being at a loss whether to cry or laugh, Tang Guisheng could only cough a few times. He was truly impressed by this grandson of his since he unexpectedly didn't forget to fish for some profits while carrying out the assassinations. Xiao, our Tang family is inferior to the Yao family in the end. We'll wait until we've truly developed our force. But we'll absolutely never let this go. Anyways, as for the money, just take it as you're spending money. Well, since the matters here have been concluded, then I'll return to Shanghai tomorrow. By the way, who should I give the authority to manage the issues here? Tang Xiao said with a smile. Give it to Little Wei. Tang Guisheng said. All right, no problem. If you don't have any other instructions, I'll hang up the phone. Tang Xiao said. Okay. The call ended. While fiddling with his mobile, Tang Xiao shook his head, a helpless expression hanging on his face. Immediately after he phoned the Huang family's head, Huang Jinfu, to tell him that the matter had been finished and he no longer needed help from the Huang family's intelligence network. In the evening he brought Tang Wei to the Huang family and enjoyed dinner together with the Huangs, deepening their friendship, and then returned to Emerald Hotel. Boss. Hei Long stood outside the Emerald Hotel. He immediately greeted him with a joyful expression when he saw Tang Xiao. Nodding to him in response, Tang Xiao then went upstairs to his presidential suite with Hei Long. After sitting on the sofa, he calmly said, Hei Long, you're really lucky. The Yao family has just admitted defeat, bringing an end to our conflict. Anyhow, you have done well in Hongpa district and I'll honor my promise to give you a good future. Thank you, boss. Hei Long was excited. I'll be leaving Guangyang tomorrow and Tang Wei will be in charge here for the time being. Tang Xiao waved his hand and said, he'll help you to expand your turf. So, provided that you really have the ability, it won't be impossible to make you the kingpin of the underground forces in Guangyang province in the future. However, there's something you must swear to me. Please, tell me, boss. I'll definitely comply. Hei Long's body trembled violently as he quickly said. Don't agree so fast. Tang Xiao shook his head and said, My request is very simple. You must absolutely not involve yourself with drugs, forcing women into prostitution, and you can't operate a casino. I don't care what kind of businesses you do, but if you go against these three conditions of mine, I'll personally cut your head off without waiting for the cops to clean you up. Boss, I can comply with your demand. Hei Long hesitated and said, but I have limited manpower and financial resources. Thus, if I want to control the entire Guangyang, I'm afraid. I'll give you the money and the manpower. Tang Shou said. Hei Long's spirit startled and he immediately said, I got it, boss. Don't worry. I'll work hard. Regardless of what happens in the future, two-thirds of the income will be transferred to you every year for all the businesses I manage. Very astute, eh? Tang Xiao laughed, but I'm a bit worried now. Would I be fostering a tiger and inviting a calamity? Ah, uh. You're teasing me, boss. Hei Long forced a smile and said, with your strength alone or the Tang family's forces, let alone becoming a big force in Guangyang. I will never be able to oppose you, even if my underlings were to be spread out all over the country. I heard that even the Sun family ended up very miserably. 
All right, I was just joking with you. Tang Xiao smiled as he waved his hand and said, As for the money, take one third and send it to the person in charge installed by the Tang family in Guangyang. This, just think of it as my Tang family's investment in you. Yes, yes, yes. Feeling happy, Hei Long repeatedly nodded. All right. I have nothing else to tell you, so you can go back first. Tang Xiao waved his hand and said, Wait until Tang Wei finishes all the issues here and he'll find you later. After Hei Long left, Tang Wei entered the room. Tang Xiao then told him about Hei Long and instructed him to take care of the issue. Brother, that Hei Long is not a good chap. Tang Wei forced a smile and said, From what I can tell, he's not only ruthless and merciless, but also ungrateful. You personally killed his two trusted underlings, yet he didn't show any resentment at all. This kind of man only sees benefits as the most important thing. I'm afraid he will be troublesome after we restrain him. Well, this kind of talent is, in fact, the best type to control. Tang Xiao let out a pale smile and said, With the Tang family as a deterrent, he won't dare to do anything outrageous. He likes benefits, so we'll give him that. We can use him well in the future as long as he has the ability, he will our Tang family's sharp knife. Nonetheless, the support from our family must only be done in the dark. I understand. Tang Wei nodded and continued, anyways, do you still have to leave for Guangyang tomorrow even though you already got your leave of absence? Actually, I still have things to do in Shanghai. Tang Xiao said with a pale smile, since the matter here has been concluded temporarily, it's kinda meaningless for me to stay. So I had better go back earlier so I can take of my own things. What? Tang Wei was astonished and said, how did I not hear you talk about it before? Well, I have a winery in Star City and today is the annual wine tasting conference. Tang Xiao said, the wine produced by my winery has been sent to the wine tasting conference. So I'm looking forward to this event since it can become a promotion and publicity for my business. Brother, you really run quite a lot of businesses. Tang Wei involuntarily laughed and said, All right. Leave this place to me. Don't worry about it. Guangyang Province, Guan City Airport. Yao Xinhua quietly waited with a few of his trusted men in the airport's waiting room. His mood was extremely terrible. Originally, he took a group of elite experts of the family to team up with the Sun family in order to destroy the Tang family's businesses. He even nearly forced the Tang family to abandon Guangyang province. However, the situation didn't proceed along with his expectations. Even the Tang's counterattack unexpectedly gave him a heavy blow, while the Sun family was almost ruined. Shame. This result was truly shameful for him. He actually didn't want to go back to Beijing dejectedly. However, the family's head had decreed that he must go back. So the contest between the Yaos and the Tangs in Guangyang had probably been concluded. This made him quite depressed and wanting to vomit blood. Young master. A burly man strode into the waiting room. Slightly frowning, Yao Xinhua growled, What's up? Young master, we finally discovered it. The burly man whispered, The one in charge for the Tang family since Tang Yunpeng left Guangyang is called Tang Xiao. He's the person who led the Tang family's experts to attack us. Tang Xiao? I know more or less about the members of the Tang family. Yao Xinhua knitted his brows and said, But is there there such a figure in the Tang family? Where did this person come from? He's Tang Yunda's biological son. He was missing and lived outside the family for years. About two months ago the Tang family found him and took him back to the family. They also held a ceremonial ritual to recognize the ancestors. He's 20 years old this year, and I heard that he had just been admitted to university. Furthermore, he was the CET's top scorer for the science subjects in Xuanqing province. Tang Wei went to find him in Shanghai a few days ago. Following that the Tang family gave him the full authority to deal with the issues in Guangyang. You mean my real opponent is this Tang Xiao? 
Yao Xinhua's face changed color as he grimly said, he's 20 years old and a baby boy who has just been admitted to college? That's right. Despite sensing Yao Xinhua's anger, the big man still answered truthfully. Yao Xinhua was silent for a brief moment. He suddenly grinned as he shook his head and said, I never thought the Tang family would conceal this so deeply. To think that they even pushed a baby boy to the front desk to hide it. What fucking pricks. I can tell that this is only their poor attempt to conceal it, yet it reveals their scheme. In my opinion, this Tang Xiao is not the real leader of the Tang family assigned to Guangyang, but someone else. Otherwise, relying on a baby boy to defeat me. <laughs> Young master, I also thought likewise after I got the information. Anyways, I sent some people to check on Tang Xiao's situation in Star City. He's ordinary, extremely so. But his luck is quite good since he got acquainted with some people with a bit of power. What kind of people? Yao Xinhua asked. The Long family's young master in Star City, Long Zhengyu, and the Endless Virtue Pharmaceuticals boss, Chen Zhizhong. The big man said, Ah, uh. right. He's also a classmate of Yuan Chuling, the son of the Yuan family's big boss, Yuan Zhengxian. That kiddo indeed has a bit of skill then. Regardless, his luck is too heavy, so he's not worth paying attention. Yao Xinhua shook his head and said, Forget investigating this Tang Xiao. Continue to investigate the real commander-in-chief of the Tang family. Shanghai, Forest Park Residential Estates. Driving a red Audi A4, Han Xingwu registered at the main gate's post and then slowly drove inside. Tang Xiao entrusted the house key to Yu Kai and she already received it. However, she hadn't visited the house since she had yet to give the money to Tang Xiao. Because she happened to have free time and the idea suddenly came to her mind, she then rushed here to see the house. I hope that kiddo found a good house for me. Else I'll make him look good when he comes back. Han Qingwu parked the car downstairs a residential building according to the address of the house. She then took the key and entered the building. The quality is not bad. Can I really rent with so little money? Inside, Han Qingwu actually found a property management office. Furthermore, there were also a few well-dressed men and women bustling about. Even the decoration of this building gave a high-end atmosphere to her. 27th Floor Riding the elevator, Han Qingwu arrived at the 27th floor. She stood in the corridor to take a look at the two flat stores on the floor. After that, she immediately took out the key to open the door's number according to the address Tang Xiao gave her. My god. Isn't this too exaggerated? Han Qingwu strode through the door. But she then gaped with eyes staring wide after seeing the situation inside. Chapter 374, Wine Tasting Conference The magnificent living room had a extremely luxurious decoration style. The wooden floor was covered with beige carpet, and the variety of home appliances were all high-end foreign brands. Even the sofa in the living room was made of expensive leather. The most exaggerated was the 60-inch LCD TV that could be used to watch movies directly at home. Too extravagant. Han Qingwu took off her shoes and looked elsewhere. She couldn't help exclaiming with a resentful as well as shocked expression. She roughly estimated that this flat was, at least, 250 square meters wide. There were five rooms and three living rooms, a kitchen and two bathrooms. Even the balcony was more than 10 square meters. She knew the housing prices in Shanghai. In this metropolis, where an inch of land was worth a bar of gold, such a building was definitely priced at more than 10 million. After looking around, Han Qingwu forced a smile and took out her mobile to dial Tang Xiao's cell number. After a while, her call was connected. Tang Xiao, are you kidding me? Your friend's house is too. You're not satisfied with it? Tang Xiao's voice came out of the mobile. I'm satisfied, but it's way too much. Han Qingwu forced a smile and said, This house is simply a mansion. 
the house should be around 250 square meters or more. And the decoration is too luxurious. Tell me, will your friend really agree to rent this place for a few thousand yuan a month? It's good if it meets your satisfaction. Tang Xiao said, like I said, the person himself doesn't want to leave the house empty. He doesn't care how much rent you can pay either. If you don't want to stay there, then just forget it. I'll stay. Who says I won't take it? Han Qingwu quickly called out, why would I not take it if the chance is given to me? So be it then. I'll be waiting for you to come back, and then I'll give you six months of rent. All right. Tang Xiao replied and directly ended the call. While holding her mobile phone, Han Qingwu couldn't help rolling her eyes as she heard the beeping blind sounds from the mobile. However, she let out a smile as she looked at the luxurious and beautiful house. The next day, radiant and enchanting sunlight shined on the whole world. Shanghai World Trade Exhibition Center Hundreds of brands of wine from across the country were placed on the counters. On the corridor outside the counters, liquor wholesalers, who came from all over the country, strolled around, looking at the variety of wines on the counter. In counter number 246. While sitting quietly in a chair, Kong Xia watched the streams of people coming and going. The god's nectar produced by magnificent Tang Corp winery had no fame and was unknown. Thus, many people looked at it, yet no one showed any intention to order. Numerous people even jeered because of the price displayed on the sign. How come I have never heard about this magnificent Tang Corp? They only offer one type of wine, yet the price is 18,888 yuan. Is this a joke or something? I really don't know whether the boss of this company is stupid or not, but to think that it's being sold with such a sky-high price without any fame at all is unexpected. There are indeed many expensive domestic wines, but what's exactly is this god's nectar? They don't fear being laughed at, eh? The owner of this liquor is just a money grubber. 18,888 per bottle? Isn't this like a scam? Is it possible that this drink is a god's nectar? Really now? All kinds of birds can be found in a big forest. This company is surely scamming. To think that they deliberately out such a high price. Let's go. Kong Xia listened to the voices of the passing people with a calm expression. So did Su Quan as he kept his smiling face, not the slightest bit concerned with their opinions. Oh. Grandpa, this wine is rather interesting. I've never heard of its name, but the price is unexpectedly 18,888 yuan. Is this wine better than the best Wuliangye? A clear voice belonged to a girl sounded. Two people, one old and one young, came before the counter. After the old man observed the four bottles of God's nectar on the counter, he looked quite astonished. After he hesitated for a moment, he looked at Su Quan and curiously asked, Little brother, from where does this wine originates? Also, the other counters give a chance to taste the wine, how come you don't? Uncle, our wine is from Star City, Xuanqing Province. Su Quan replied with a smile, as for why we don't allow anyone to taste it, it's because we're afraid that people who can't judge the quality would spoil this good wine. Besides, we don't need favors from those wine wholesalers. The second reason why we're participating in this conference is that we want to introduce this god's nectar to the market. Courage and self-confidence, you have both. The old raised his thumb and exclaimed in praise, such being said, I'll look forward to taste your wine. Since you don't allow it, how about I buy a bottle? To be frank, few things can make this old man curious these years, but this wine piqued my curiosity. Su Quan turned his head to Kong Xia. The latter stood up and sized up the old man. She then smiled and said, Uncle, we only brought these four bottles of wine. We prepared two bottles for the wine tasting conference, but we can use the remaining two at will. Since you want to taste it, we'll give you a bottle for free. If you think the wine is good, I hope the elderly would help in publicizing it. The old man stared blankly for a moment, 
as he then nodded and smiled, it's very good of you to say so. Having said it, he took a bottle of God's nectar, and then said to his granddaughter, Little Ling, take out my wine glass. Okay. The seventeen or eighteen years old girl carefully took out a four-angle crystal cup from the bag and handed it over to the old man. The old man opened the bottle, poured the liquor into the four-angle crystal cup until it was half full. He immediately looked astonished as his eyes stared wide. This mellow fragrance is intoxicating. Though this old man have yet to taste it, this wine commands me to do so. He took a deep breath and then gently sipped a mouthful. A few seconds later, his expression turned stunned, followed by redness coloring his old face with an intense shocked expression at the same time. While Kong Xia and Su Quan smiled, the old man slowly closed his eyes. Hey, Grandpa, don't keep me guessing. How's the wine? The girl pulled the old man's sleeves, a dissatisfied expression hanging on her small, delicate face. The old man opened his eyes instantly and couldn't bear to exclaim in praise, good wine, great wine. This old man drank many good wines in his life, yet there's only one wine that can be compared to this one. Uncle, are you not kidding me? Su Quan grinned ear to ear and said, I have drunk a lot of wines, but not even one of them tasted better than this one. More than 40 years ago, I went to Shenangjia and found a group of monkeys there. Have you heard about monkey wine? It's a pity that I was only lucky enough to drink a few mouthfuls of it since those monkeys attacked me, so I had to flee to the wilderness. The taste of that monkey wine is something I can never forget. Thus, I didn't expect to there really exist such a great wine besides monkey wine in this world. Su Quan suddenly understood and then said with a smile, I heard about monkey wine, but I have never drank it. Uncle, since you liked our god's nectar, you must help us publicize it. Worry not, young man. The old man laughed and said, this old man will keep his word. Anyhow, can I order a few bottles in advance? The price will be according to your tag. Thank you for the patronage, uncle. Kong Xia lightly smiled and said, however, we can't do a private sell. If you like it, you can buy them in our store. We'll deliver it to our exclusive stores in various cities, after the conference. Your company opened your own exclusive stores? The old man asked in astonishment. That's right. Kong Xia replied with a smile. Impressive. The old man raised his thumb and exclaimed in praise, nowadays, breweries send their produced wines to the wholesalers. Thus, the latter monopolize it in every part of the country but you actually invested to hold the monopoly and sell it directly to the customers. It's great. Well, it was boss request. Kong Xia smiled and said, we can only follow his instructions. And your bosses? The old man nodded. I'm sorry, uncle. Our boss seldom intervenes in company issues. Kong Xia said, he's also the type of person who doesn't like to show his face in public. Hence, we can't announce his information to the public as well. Perhaps, the elderly would have a chance to know him in the future. The old man couldn't help laughing, from the looks of it, your boss must be a great person. Anyways, how about we discuss something else? I like this wine very much. Since we met here, can you sell it to me in advance? I don't need too many of it, though. It will be fine if you sell me ten boxes. I'll buy the wine later in your shop after I have finished it. This, Kong Xia hesitated. The old man took a business card from his pocket and handed it to Kong Xia, little girl, this is my business card. After receiving it, Kong Xiao's eyes swept over the card as her expression immediately changed. You're the owner of the wide group, elderly Du Kuen? I never thought you would actually recognize me. Du Kuen said with a smile, it seems that I am the same as your magnificent Tang Corpse boss who hardly appears on stage, don't you think? Kong Xia then took out a business card and handed it to Du Kuen, saying, elderly Du, we actually met before. Du Kuen stared blankly. As he took Kong Xia's business card, his brows furrowed. 
He thought for a long time, and then said in puzzlement, Kong Xia. This name I know as being the world's most famous gold manager. Don't tell me you're. There being no mistakes, that should be me. Kong Xia said with a smile, I dare not accept being called the world's most famous gold manager, however. Du Kuen's expression changed. He looked deeply at Kong Xia and curiously said, I still remember inviting you to be the CEO of our wide group, yet you refused. Well, I had just resigned from my previous company. Kong Xia said with a smile, it's been so many years, so I just wanted to have a good rest. After finally recognizing Kong Xia's identity, respect appeared on Du Kuen's face. He then nodded and sighed, I never thought that the magnificent Tang Corp's boss would actually be able to get you. His luck is truly good. Elderly Du, since you want to buy our wine, then I'll take the responsibility to sell ten boxes to you. Kong Xia laughed, only, we didn't bring more aside from these four bottles, so I'm afraid you need to send someone to Star City. Du Kuen said with a smile, no problem. Chapter 375 God's Nectar. With Du Kuen's departure, without too many efforts, many people learned from him that there was a wine called God's Nectar with great flavor and mellow taste in this year's wine tasting conference. In the case that it was someone else praising God's Nectar, they would have probably believed and ridiculed it. But Du Kuen, however, was someone influential whether in the business world or his other secret identity. He was, in fact, one of the judges of this conference. Old do, you're not someone who boasts. Is that God's nectar really that exaggerated just like you say? The host of the wine tasting conference, the vice chairman of China Wine Industry Association, Qin Chang Lin, asked with curiosity. Several other judges also curiously looked at Du Cohen, waiting for his reply. I can guarantee you that the God's nectar from the magnificent Tang Corp will surely make you praise it. How about I pour you a cup for you to smell it? Du Cohen laughed and said. Old Du, don't kid with me. Qin Chung Lin couldn't help laughing and said, You want us to smell it? Tasting their wine before the official opening is already giving them face. Du Cohen hinted at his granddaughter behind him with his finger. The girl swiftly pulled out the god's nectar bottle and poured a cup. The wine fragrance fluttered out. It was only a few seconds, yet Qin Chan Ling and the other five judges had their eyes lit up in an instant. They couldn't help but gulp down their saliva. The aroma. It was truly appetizing. They couldn't believe that such a thick, pure wine flavor would come out from just pouring a cup. Let me try it. Qin Chang Lin quickly stretched his hand out. With a quick movement, Du Cohen grabbed the four-angle crystal cup from his granddaughter's hand, quickly gulping it down. Shortly after, an intoxicating expression was revealed on his old face. This wine should only be found in the heaven. Only a few people in the human world can taste it. Once again, Du Cohen couldn't help but sigh. Pfft. Looking at the six people swallowing their saliva, the girl couldn't help laughing. Qin Chong Lin grabbed the empty cup and blinked at the girl. Immediately, the girl smiled and poured him a cup. I'll try it. Qin Chang Lin placed it before his nose and sniffed it. An intoxicated expression appeared on his face before he gently sipped a mouthful of it. A moment after, his expression turned shocked and disbelieving. Chairman Qin, how is it? One of the judges quickly asked. While looking at the remaining god's nectar in the cup, Qin Changlin's expression turned a bit helpless. He forced a wry smile and said, I regret it. I really shouldn't have drunk it. The judge stared blankly as he then looked at Du Cohen and said with a smile, Old Du, this rumor should have been seen through, don't you think? This wine may smell good, but I'm afraid it's not much after drinking it, no? <laughs> While glancing at Du Cohen who smirked strangely, Qin Chung Lin forced a smile and said, Little Li, I have yet to finish my sentence. What I mean by regretting drinking this wine is because I'm afraid that I can't drink it again. What old Du said is true. This wine should only be found in the heaven, and only a few people can taste it in the human world. 
This is a wonderful, peerless wine. Perhaps you'll be unable to sleep if you don't drink it a few times a day. That judge was shocked and quickly grabbed the empty cup and stretched his hand out to the girl. Several others were astonished and also follow in the queue. A minute later the five had the same expression as Du Cohen and Qin Chengling's a moment ago. They shocked as well as a bit incredulous. Old Du, tell me quickly. Where did you get this wine? Quickly. I have never drunk such a fabulous wine in my life. This truly satiates my craving. Tell me quickly. Regardless of the price, I must buy it. A judge quickly called out. Yes, old do. Qin Chenglin rapidly echoed, quickly tell us, from where did you buy this wine? I must buy it. This wine isn't cheap. It's priced at 18,888 a bottle. Du Kuen grinned, do you really want to buy it? We're all wine lovers. Qin Chenglin said without hesitation, I'd buy it for 188,888 yuan, let alone 18,888 yuan. Me too. The others echoed. Even if you guys give that much, I'm afraid the seller still won't sell it. Du Kuen shook his head and laughed, I can tell you the counter that's selling it, though. It's the number 0246 counter. You guys can go there. Qin Chenglin hurriedly put down the empty cup in his hand and strode outside. The other five followed him. At number 0246 counter, Kong Xia hung up the phone and looked happy. She rapidly left the counter toward the entrance of the hall, leaving Su Chen and several others surprised and astonished. Strange, what's wrong with Chief Kong? Who called to Chief Kong for her to make a blunder like this? It's odd. As several people chatted, Su Quan seemed to realize something and secretly made a guess, could it be that Tang Xiao is coming? He's the only who can make Chief Kong behave like this. Outside the main entrance of the conference venue, Tang Xiao forced a smile at the four security guards who stopped him. He had spent some time to talk his way out with them, yet the four of them were unmoved and hell-bent on not letting him in. Helpless, he had no choice but to call Kong Xia. After he returned to Shanghai he went back home to take a shower and change clothes then rushed here. All for the sake of the wine tasting conference. Boss. Bringing a fragrant breeze with her, Kong Xia appeared in front of Tang Xiao, her whole face filled with joy. When the four security guards saw Kong Xia, they looked slightly dazed. Thought they had seen her before, but they were still stunned yet again by her soul-stirring beauty. I don't have a pass, so they didn't allow me to enter. Tang Xiao said with a smile, I'm afraid I can only ask you to bring me in. Hello, guys. Kong Xia looked at the four security guards with a smile and said, He's the boss of our company, he should be allowed to enter, don't you think? Okay, okay. The security guard whom Kong Xia looked at and talked to immediately nodded and felt extremely flattered. Kong Xia faced him again and gave a charming smile. She then faced toward Tang Xiao and invited him, Boss, let's go inside. So, what's the progress? Tang Xiao smiled and asked after he went in, I just got off the plane and caught up with you here. Today is just to publicize our booth. Tomorrow will be the official opening of the wine tasting competition. Kong Xia said with a smile, Our God's nectar is priced rather too high. Many people made jokes about it the whole morning. Well, 10,000 yuan per bottle is, of course, a very high price. Tang Xiao said with a smile. Boss, wasn't our God's nectar priced at 11,000 before? Kong Xia stared blankly for a moment, looked confused. Ah, uh, I haven't told you about it yet. Its tagged price now is 18,888 yuan per bottle after the high-level management had a discussion about it. What? Tang Xiao looked dazed as he suddenly recalled something. He then patted his head and forced out a smile, it's a loss. I made it a loss. I drank with several friends a couple days ago in a restaurant in Shanghai. I told them it was priced at 10,000 yuan per bottle. 
Eventually, they'll want to order some bottles from our winery. Eh, it turned out like this. Kong Xia couldn't help laughing and said, it's all right. Since they are your friends, boss, selling it a bit cheaper is normal. However, we can't set this kind of precedent again. If it was only 10,000 per bottle, it would be fine. Tang Xiao reluctantly said, but I also gave them a discount. Cough. Cough. Kong Xia was choked by Tang Xiao's words. She didn't know whether to cry or laugh as she looked at Tang Xiao and curiously asked, Boss, are you regretting it? More than regretting it. My intestines turned green because of it. Tang Xiao forced a bitter smile and said, Damn, it's 50% cheaper than the direct price. Ah. Uh. Let bygones be bygones. I must not give face to those so-called friends again in the future. This is money. A lot of it. Well, they haven't contacted me, yet. Kong Xia laughed, so you don't need to worry. Let's just wait until our god's nectar hit the market. They will also know about the selling price. And so they will know boss's great spirit, a friend worth making. Tang Xiao wryly smiled and shook his head. That night, outside Miao Wendong, there were several other people he considered as friends. This cheap profit turned out to be a gift to them. The duo returned to counter number 0246 while chatting. Huh? What happened? Kong Xia's footsteps came to a halt as she caught sight of the counter that was completely surrounded by people. The sight made her confused. Those people are gathered around, our counter? Tang Shou said. Yes. Kong Xia nodded and said, the counter was still empty when I came out to greet you. How come it was surrounded by people within this short time? All right, let's go. Tang Shou said, let's have a look at the cause. The duo had yet to squeeze into the crowd as they heard Su Quan's voice from the inside, gentlemen, we really don't sell out God's nectar. Besides, we only brought four bottles. Our general manager has just gifted a bottle while the rest will be used tomorrow. So we must apologize for this inconvenience. If you want to buy it, you'll have to wait for a few days when we'll open our exclusive stores in Shanghai as well as in the major cities across the country. Please go to our stores to buy it then. In the innermost circle. Little brother, please sell me a bottle. Qin Chenglin forced a smile and said, only two bottles will be used for tomorrow's entry, I want to buy the remaining bottle. We have tasted the god's nectar brought by old Du a moment ago. It's simply, fabulous. If my wine addiction flares up and I can't drink such a good wine, I'm afraid I will be unable to sleep after I go back. Elderly, I really can't sell it. Su Quan said, I'm only an errand boy and our superior is currently not here. How about you wait for her? With Tang Xiao's support, Kong Xia squeezed inside. She then looked at the surrounding crowd in front of the counter. After she and Tang Xiao entered the counter, she said, What happened? Su Quan's eyes turned bright immediately upon seeing Tang Xiao. He quickly said, Chief Kong, they want to buy our god's nectar. They even threatened to buy however many bottles we have. While looking at Qin Chenglin and the rest, Kong Xia said with a smile, Gentlemen, my subordinate said it crystal clear. I ask everyone to please go back. Our magnificent Tang Corp will hold a press conference a few days later. After the press conference, our 50 exclusive stores for God's Nectar in 25 cities across the country will open at the same time. By then, I hope all of you come and support our exclusive stores. Thank you.